frying pan. And into the fire, run. Run! Welcome to the first Helm's Deep project video. Listeners of the podcast will be aware that I've been building a large Helm's Deep model for use in the game. There's lots of XPS foam involved, lots of fill, lots of expanding foam, loads and loads of glue, but I've based the model around a toy that I found on eBay. Something I don't think is available anymore, but I've picked up three of the kits, mainly for consistency for the wall section, so I have extras. I'm not an extra at board or terrain maker. I've made dioramas before, I've made some pieces of terrain, and in my work as a commission painter, I've picked up some of the skills that are useful, but I'm definitely not at the level of Steve over at Top Table Gaming, or Luke APS, or Andrew over at Beer Clipper. I don't do these things very often, so I'll be cutting a lot of corners if I'm honest. I want to get this ready to play games on. It's not going to be a kind of expert level stuff, so please do forgive me. Let's start off by showing you some pictures of the toy, showing its component parts and what kind of size and scale it is. And the first video I'll show you will be some footage that I took for the Top Table Gaming community vlog. And here's some images that I was talking about just to sort of show you what the toy was like before I started. Obviously some bigger toys come with it, well out of scale. Much better scaled with the um, Games Workshop miniatures themselves. Um, closer I believe than the, the, the actual model Games Workshop produced. So the backs are hollow, that will all need to be filled in and I have done as you'll see later in the video. Um, this is mainly why I got three sets because of the wall sections, I wanted to use them as the inner wall as well. Um, this buttress section that goes at the back of the um, courtyard is the wrong way around but you can be removed and I've placed it. And there's an image sort of me sort of generally laying it out, working out where it's going to go. Made loads of these little blocks to fill in the inner walls. And you can see me starting to do that there, so that's just me gluing them in. Mostly PVA. So I'm building up the, the layers. And because of the curves, I've decided to do it that way rather than do single blocks. Um, so I eventually kind of, as you can see, slowly fill it out and fill out those bits. Um, and there's it starting to take shape. Um, I'm starting to fill out more areas there, starting to build in, build in and fill in the walkways. You can see from the back there, it's all been tidied up. It's still pretty messy. Um, and yeah, it's uh, we'll cut into the video now. So um, here's a little project I've been working on. I talked about it a little bit on uh, on the podcast. Um, so this is a uh, a toy, a Helm's Deep toy. I think it's made by Play Toy. Um, I haven't got the box anymore, so I can't remember. You can pick them up on eBay from from anything from if you're bidding from sort of twenty quid up to sort of around the fifty sixty pound mark of the fully box with all the stuff in, but. A lot of them are on buy it now around that price. If you hang around and watch out enough, um, you can get them around the sort of the twenty pound mark. I think even got one of my sets for fifteen. Um, actually, you're not going to use a lot of the stuff. It's it's probably worth getting it as cheap as you possibly can. Um, scaling wise, it's really quite good. Um, I will um, go to another shot in a minute with a with a miniature in, but um, I'll just do a little scan around first. So it's obviously hollow backed, so I spent a lot of time. Um, I'm sort of sticking it together at the back and um, and I'm putting lots of XPS foam in. Um, it's not, I'm not it's not super neat yet, so I cut out lots of uh, lots of bricks about the same size as the ones moulded into the plastic at the front, and I've built up the inner walls. Um, I sort of filled out the areas of the walkways and extended it slightly. Um, it's quite messy at the moment. I've not spent ages on forming the bricks better. Um, plan is to sort of sand some of that down and smooth it down and then I've got some filler and I'm going to try and tidy up a lot with filler. Um, things aren't going to be exactly the same as they are in the film. Um, the spacing and the layers and stuff but I really really wanted to um, make sure that uh, that it was very recognisable at, at Helm's Deep. I think someone's come to talk to me. Hello Willow. Um, so um, you can, the door's still open. Um, I've still got the walkway, the toy walkway, which is out of reach at the moment, but that just fits on the front. I'm going to have to extend it slightly because I've built the height up. Um, I'll go around this side. Um, I've got to build the walkway across here. Um, and there's sort of the extra um, area that goes on the front there to make it a bit more film-like. 
um, and then down this side um, build some kind of the steps come down there and that, that area looks wider than it would do on the film but it's just about making it playable as well I want to be able to get my arm in um, for miniatures and things so I will build up that a certain way and then I'm going to just build up the rock um, I'm not going to build um, the, the horn tower um, that will be a bit of an image or something, or something to represent it. Same with the back of the, the halls as well. Um, never going to game in it, and it's very nice, but I'm either going to do a completely flat painting or picture of it, or I'm just going to build the arches on in quite thin 6mm um, um, XPS foam, but then paint it as well, so it's like a slightly raised image. Um, and again, like the gaps here, it's all going to be filled in with um, expanding foam and XPS foam, so it looks like the, like it's built into the rock. Um, so there will be some inconsistencies with the film design. Well, I say some, lossy loads, loads of inconsistencies. But all I really wanted to do is make use of the scale, which seemed spot on for the 28 mil miniatures, and and the fact that it's moulded in, in, in the kind of dimensions that make it immediately sort of um, recognisable as Helm's Deep from the film. Um, and I really bought the kits, the extra kits, the spare kits for these panels really so I could use them in the second wall um, used spare kind of buttress here and I've cut some off um, and used it on the other side um, just to sort of make it look like home is deep I'm gonna be bringing a um, obviously the deepened wall is gonna come come down here as well um, but yeah that's um, it's coming along it's, it's, it's designed for gaming it's not it's not a deer armor kind of level thing um, I'm sure Sure, better model makers out there will make a much better job of it. I'm much more of a painter than I am as a as a model builder, but I'm pretty sure it'll be be fun and gameable. As you can see, I made a pretty healthy start, but there's still a long way to go. It's very very messy as it stands. Very very rough cut XPS foam. Much more amateurish looking than what I was hoping for. So I've got to find the balance really between doing this project quickly and able to play games on it, um, and it becoming an all-encompassing thing that takes the whole year and becomes my only project. And I really don't want it to be that. It could be a lot better. You know, even I, in my limited skills, could make it better. But I'm trying to find a balance between time and that, and painting armies and, and doing other things like creating videos and doing doing podcasts. So the next stage now will be to start using some filler to tidy up, sand down and then using expanding foam to fill in the rock areas where the castle meets the rock, meets the mountain and really start to sort of blend that in. Once we get to that stage and it's all filled in and looking good, then I can start looking at priming it and building the deeper wall. As it stands, I'm not going to be using the expanding foam inside of my office, so I won't be filming myself doing that. And I would take you downstairs to my garden where I'm going to do it, but there's, there's a home school going on in, in the conservatory. It's all very, very noisy with a five-year-old and a one-year-old, so that wouldn't be the best of you. So I'm going to go and do that, and then you'll have some more footage of what it looks like when it's done. And here we are. Um, looking at the uh, castle with lots of expanded foam and lots of uh, polyfiller on so filled in all those gaps around where the walls ended uh, so it looks like uh, it's coming out of the mountain coming out the rock um, close to the uh, the film images but obviously lots of inaccuracies there and things I need to fix later on now there it looks pretty messy there's a thin coat of uh, PVA and water and a little bit of black paint so I can see where I've painted basically to seal over the blue foam um, to see a little bit so that it takes the, uh, the the black primer better and there we are with the first layer of black prime on a bit shiny still wet there at the time um, you know starting to look a little bit tidy with black all over and there I've given it a little dusting of grey primer as well just to mat it out a bit more and make it a bit easier to see where the, the lighting and things are for when I go in and with the airbrush and actually start painting it properly and hopefully there that would be the area I'm most comfortable with with this whole build um, painting it and I can hopefully make it make it look cool then it's, it's a little bit rough around the edges at the moment but I think I can think I can save it so I'll take you back to my face now so we can close out this little video so that's as far as I've got so far. Um, probably f more than halfway through the main bulk of the build with just the deep in water go. Um, I want to add a few more little bits inside as I noticed that when I've uh, sort of been painting it I realised that there's no way for a model to get to a certain area. It's a little bit too abstract really so I've actually ordered some doors online today. Hopefully they'll arrive in the, in the next few days um, and I'll uh, add them to that part. It, 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 you know, it's not going to be the same as in the Peter Jackson films um, in terms of total layout, but as long as there's a doorway that I can abstractly say, if you go to that doorway, you can come through the other side of the wall, that kind of thing. Um, and I'll, uh, you may not see those bits until the, to the final paintings. 
stuff, but um, I will do those. Um, and I'm probably going to start now mapping out the, the deeping wall, measuring it up. I need to put that castle and its base on the corner of a 4x4 um, and then measure to the other side to make sure that the, the deeping wall doesn't end somewhere in the middle of the, the middle of the board and leave a gap. I might have a little bit of rock on the other side, depending on how much wall I get in. Um, if it looks like it's cutting half the wall off in terms of scale, then I'm just gonna just gonna leave it as the wall hits the edge of the table. Um, if it looks like there's enough wall I made it with a small rock formation for it to buttress into the other side. And I need to decide how I'm going to um, do the actual um, the broken wall. Um, I've seen a couple of things um, online recently on, in the Facebook groups for Middle Earth that there's a guy that's, oh, I'm sorry I don't know the names, I didn't take too much notice at the time but I kind of logged it in my in my brain, a guy that uh, has done it so you can remove the broken section. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that in a way that doesn't make it too flimsy so I'll, I'll, I'll probably have a section you, you've replaced with a, with a broken rubbly kind of section when I do it. Um, and I'm going to spend a bit of time on making the brickwork look a little bit better on the deeping wall than I did on the inside of the castle. The outside is what you see most, so it's a little bit rough and ready, and as I already mentioned earlier in the video, because I had to work the curves, it was easier for me to make blocks rather than the kind of depression method, but I'll be using a, a method that I saw Lockie on um, Zorpa Zorp Gaming, so check out his channel if you haven't um, seen already, absolutely loads of Middle Earth content, I just can't believe you wouldn't have seen that and you're watching this, I'm honest with you. Um, but he did a lovely tutorial about how to make um, realistic looking brickwork on um, on walls and made out of this foam sort of marking it out with a pencil and um, drawing it all in and then depressing areas and using f foil to get depressions and stuff it looks really really good I probably won't do some kind of filming live tutorial as I do this for this these series of videos at least I'm, I'm still planning on kind of taking you back to this is what I've done and this is what I've done and this is what I plan to do rather than filming live as I do stuff in the future I may change it but this is more of a kind of a bit by bit vlog of my build of Helm's Deep. But anyway, that's the end of this first proper video for the Out of the Frying Pan uh, podcast YouTube channel. Um, hopefully it wasn't too boring, it was of some interest to some of you. If you have come across this and you haven't um, come across the podcast, links below of the audio podcast we do based on Middle Earth Strategy Battle Games. So go and give us a listen if you haven't. If you are a listener to the podcast and you've uh, come across to see the video, hopefully it's been bearable and thank you for watching. So um, yeah, all the usual, please like the video, share it, let people know if you like it and subscribe for more because we will be doing a few more. Take care for now. Thank you. Run!